In this video tutorial, um, I'll look at a model analysis of a, a square plate uh, made of steel, um, which is uh, six millimeters thick. We'll support the edges uh, simply, just in the Z direction, and two of the corners will support in X and Y directions respectively, so that there is no uh, rigid body motion on the XY plane. We will first open Workbench on the project schematic. We'll drop our uh, model analysis system. So this will be a, a standalone system. Uh, engineering data is there by default. The geometry will use a 3D um, area and we can do our design modeler geometry. So in design modeler, we'll select one of the planes such as XY plane to model our uh, square plate. We'll go to sketching, create a simple rectangle and we'll need to just zoom in a bit so we can create a one meter by one meter area. So when the point is um, on the center we'll start the rectangle and finish somewhere and we'll enter some dimensions like a horizontal dimension and a vertical dimension so we can enter there one by one meters effectively this is all we need for our geometry so this is our sketch and we can create a concept of a surface from sketch and um, base object is uh, the sketch and we can apply and when we generate this is the surface that we are going to use uh, to mesh with uh, shell elements so next bit is to run um, workbench mechanical in workbench mechanical our geometry is transferred from design modeler the geometry has a question mark against it if you click on the surface body, all it needs is the thickness to be entered, so that is 6 meters, and we can enter it in terms of um, meters, so that is 6 e minus 3 meters, and our material is by default structural steel, and all the properties are there in the database, Young's modulus Poisson's ratio, and for model analysis and transient dynamic analysis the um, important properties are um, effectively the density, the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio and the mesh um, we can create by first of all sizing we can create a global sizing on this um, surface area so we can say on the surface the element size is 0 0.05 meters so that's 50 millimeters we can then mesh click on, click on generate and that creates um, nice square mesh and you can also see that again these are uh, shell elements although it's a it's a showing as a 3d representation. Uh, these are in fact shell elements. Now in the model analysis A5 cell, um, the environment temperature is there but it's not relevant in this case. Um, there's no pre-stress defined. It is possible to do a static analysis beforehand and then use the stresses in there to feed into your model analysis but it's not required in this case, this isn't a pre-stressed analysis. In our analysis settings, the only thing that we need to enter there is how many modes do we want to find. Uh, there is six there, so we can leave that by default. It is an undamped problem. And in the solution, we'll enter our, say, deformations, uh, like the total deformation, etc. for each mode of vibration. But before we do that, we need to make sure that this 
uh, geometry is constrained. The edges were supposed to be simply supported. So we can do that by um, going to the context, which is the environment, and on the supports, we can click on displacement, and then we can select the edge filter, and then click on the edges. So we can select uh, all four edges by pressing Control and then clicking on Apply. And on the edges, we want to fix them in the Z direction. So in the Z component, we enter 0. So that's enough for simply supporting the plate. However, the plate still has a free body motion on the XY plane. So we need to stop the plane uh, sliding on the XY plane. So how do we do that? We can simply add a couple of constraints on points. If we click on the vertex filter, we can click on the edge and apply a displacement there and make sure that it is fixed in all three components. So that's fixed in X, Y and Z. And this corner um, we can add another displacement constraint there and make sure that it's fixed in Y only. And Z was fixed there so already so we can uh, repeat that. So that two boundary conditions, displacement 2 and 3, is enough to constrain it um, in the XY plane so there is no rigid body motion. So on the solution, we had the total deformation for the first mode. We can add the other modes as well. Uh, we can add a number of these, 4, 5, and 6. We are going to extract 6 modes. So the second total deformation, we can change that to mode 2. Total deformation 3, we can change that to mode 3. Total deformation 4, change to four just make sure that it's actually three total deformation five is mode five and total deformation six is a representation of mode six so I think that's all necessary to solve this problem if you click on solve What we can see here is that the six modes are extracted and the frequencies are 28 Hz, 72.6 Hz for modes 2 and 3, mode 4 is 116 Hz, mode 5 is 147 Hz, same as mode 6. So the, these are the mode frequencies and we can look at what the mode shapes look like and animate them just to appreciate how these vibration modes are going to work. So that's mode 1. This is mode 2. This is mode 3 which is anti-symmetric of mode 2. That's mode 3. And mode 5 and mode 6. So these are all interesting modes and if the plate was supporting some sort of a machinery that was operating at this frequency it's likely that this vibration mode will be excited. So that is the point of doing a model analysis to find out what vibration modes are there, what frequencies are, are there, and um, how can that help us in our design for our structures. So this concludes our model analysis of this uh, simply supported square plate.